good, good. No, 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 we don't blame you at all. So we're hoping by the time we actually get to the report, that's going to be the big show, and we're going to have all this worked out. Um, so last year at our showcase, um, one of the presenters was uh, Carla Even, and um, she has now been the uh, comms manager down at Chula Vista for a year. So if you could imagine going into a new position as a manager during COVID, uh, our, our, we, our heart breaks for you. I couldn't even imagine stepping into that, and we have a few uh, retired managers who can uh, definitely sympathize with that. Um, but one of the products that they've been using is Live 911, and she's going to explain it in detail, but it's fascinating. We're, we're, we're truly taking a step into the future and utilizing all this technology instead of just having it sitting like it does. Um, and it's, it's an amazing thing. So pay attention, ask lots of questions, and if you have anything else um, afterwards, she'll stay around for a question and answer. You're staying for lunch, right? All right. Highest altitude, best barbecue in all of Orange County. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So I just want to say thank you for having me. Thanks to CPRA. So the, um, the word is out there about um, the technology, and people have a lot of questions about the technology. So hopefully, I can answer those for you. Um, we're actually going to receive the ASCO Leadership and Technology Award in August of 2021. Um, for this thank you. We work for an agency that is forward thinking because when they offer this and said you're going to have this, I said no thanks. Um, I was not open to it, but I was out there now trying to advocate and let people know the benefits for the citizens, the officers, the dispatchers, um, your agency. So uh, we'll, we'll get into it. Every second counts and every detail counts. Absolutely, because those details that we're learning uh, make a difference. Um, so a little bit where I'm from, Chula Vista, uh, we're in San Diego, uh, second largest city. Our population is 270,000, 52 square miles. Um, we have a total of 33 dispatchers, two part-time hourly call takers, uh, but our minimums are typically between four and seven. So if that translates to uh, your agency, and but we're taking 320,000 calls annually. So the dispatchers will take, you know, upwards of, of 30 calls in an hour for one dispatcher. So um, yeah, it's a lot. Um, and then we're pending anywhere from, we might pen 40 calls when it's semi-busy waiting to be dispatched. And over the 4th of July, we had 145 calls waiting to be dispatched on one radio channel with one dispatcher um, trying to figure out which call do I send next. Um, so the technology helps that dispatcher as well because the officers hear it and they can respond. Um, we'll talk more about that. Um, so why did we choose to do this? So um, our chief is very innovative as well as our, our staff that works there, our captains. Um, we have the drone as first responder program. Um, we're the only agency in the nation that can fly on a line of sight right now. Um, so that's been great. Uh, but they look at technology as a way to help uh, lessen the impacts of being low staff, not having enough money. Uh, our tool is the police foundation will pay for things to start up. Um, and then they'll go and ask the city, like, we have this and it's working well, can we have some money? Because people always ask, who gives you money for that? Um, so they, they get pretty creative. But um, it was just low staffing. And then also with, you know, not just COVID last year, but with civil unrest, there was this, you know, pressure to be better, do things differently. There's transparency. We want this. And then worrying about, you know, are we going to get rocks and bottles? Are we going to get, a situation where you know citizens don't like our officers and what will happen so during civil unrest we were thinking how do we get creative and give the officers the best information so they can make the most informed decision <laughs> uh, so transparency and policing is huge right now so i kind of equate it to back when we got audio one camera officers in the field were like, oh my goodness, I don't want this. This is terrible. They're going to see everything that I'm doing. And they're, they're kind of afraid of that. Um, and then you realize it's really taking them a few times from, you know, people better understand what you're doing. So for us, same thing. We're going to live stream your calls. And dispatchers are like, nope, I don't want my stuff out there. You know, you could, it could end up on Nancy Grace, it's reporting, you know, all those things. But what are the officers going to think when they start hearing my calls? It's a lot of exposure, and you feel vulnerable when all of that's going out there. You're going to obviously you're going to question me, you're going to be upset with me. But um, it's we learned a great way to do business. Um, so a little bit for the officers. They don't talk a ton about the officers. 
is it becomes pretty apparent why the officers want to hear it and what it does for them. But the officers receive the immediate location and audio of the call live streaming to them as we get it as well. So when they hear things, they can respond immediately if they want to. They can step back and they can also just decide to, you know, stage somewhere and come up with a plan. And if a dispatcher accidentally puts in the wrong location, which for a year ago I was dispatching for 20 years, I did it. Um, we do it, and it could be the car gave me the wrong location, you typed it in wrong, you have whatever. Honestly, it happens. It's embarrassing to admit, but we do it. So now the officers will come up on the radio and say something like, I'm confirming it's this location because I'm showing you on my bed on one of this. Fantastic, because we don't want to make that mistake because we see it in the news and in traffic. Um, they have geofence capabilities. You can set multiple geofences. So if I'm out in the field as an officer and I want to set a quarter mile from where I'm at, I'm a lead 11 officer and I'm in sector one. So I cover any 11, 12, 13, 14 might be. I can set multiple. So I can set my area. So if I'm over in B14, I'll still hear a quarter mile around me. I'll also hear beat 11 if that's what I choose because that's what's happening on my beat. So you can set multiple as bigger and small as you want it to be. Um, we try to get them to keep it smaller typically because when you do the whole city, it's too much and some of it might not be relevant. If you're working for a smaller city, it may make sense to do the whole city. Um, they can dismiss a call if they don't want to listen to it anymore. Just click a button. They don't have to click a button to actually listen. Um, it will just automatically scream for them if they're not muted. Um, tone of voice is 75 to 85% of phone our conversation went over the phone. In person, they say it's about 38 to 55 percent is your tone of voice, but on the phone, 75 to 85. So as a dispatcher, you can struggle with being able to tell the officer it sounds like you're not telling the truth, or it sounds this way, and you're trained as a dispatcher to pick up background noise and tone of voice. But how does that translate? So when they hear it, they know. Um, so that's huge. Um, they get all the details. So as we know, when you're taking a call as a dispatcher and they give you all the information, uh, you know, a span of panel with white socks, black shirt, green shirts, red hat, backpack, you know, this kind of car, you're like, wait, what? And you're trying to get it quick, well, they're hearing. And they're also hearing the turn by turns. So if the person leaves, you don't have to type that, and then the dispatcher hear it in the air, and they get everything. Um, and they can improve their response plan. So when they go out there prior to live 911, they were making a response plan based on the details that the dispatcher gave them on the primary radio or what they read on their EPC. Now they're making a response plan based on the caller and the caller's tone of voice and what they're hearing directly from them. Um, improving our response time, I don't work in uh, analytics at all. I'm not doing the analyst uh, response time, but I can tell you that our agency met our priority one response time for the first time in a decade. And the last year, we were not hiring any more officers and crime did, definitely did not go down. So um, we were able to do that. But you see it when the call comes in of the you know emergency or the life-threatening situation or the non-breather or the baby that had drowned or the critical incident when the officer gets on scene before you can even get a call on that. That's when I know that it improves our response times because they're there. And then de escalation. We had an incident where the lady called in and said that um, there was a man at the door with a gun and a hammer who was trying to break into the house. So on the radio, you hear that and you send multiple units and a canine and a sergeant, and all of that, but you hear the live 911 call. Um, it's her 17 year old son. She never saw a gun and she never saw a hammer. And so it, the officers just scale it back because they're actually listening. So she kept hanging up on us and they were telling us, we're listening to live 911, call her back. So it provides that ability for them to de-escalate and not go in and get themselves guns out, blazing, not realizing. So you're saying they didn't hear the 911, so when you call back, they can still hear the same call? We set it up that way, yeah. Um, if they don't hear all of our admin calls, they actually don't hear any, but we set it up to where we call back. Are there any other questions up until this point? Yeah? Okay. All right. Next slide. Um, 
So this is what the software looks like. So green means the officer is listening. Uh, the little red circle means the officer is muted. So if there's something going on that drops by the officer, uh, we can ask them to unmute and listen. Uh, the right side is our zoomed out map. And the left side is our zoomed in map. So those maps on the left will drop the pin where the caller is. And over on the right, you can see what's going on. But that's what it'll look like on your screen. So for audio in the car, so the officer is driving, you have audio of the dispatcher going out, you have the live button. How do they control that? Um, they usually set it up when they go. Well, we don't require officers to listen to it because of everything that's going on. And they do have the ability, if it's too much, to hit dismiss. Um, put the touch of the button on their MPC and dismiss that call so that they're not hearing that background noise. Um, but you can watch the video of Clovis PD when the officers responded to the Niana parking lot with the rifle and it ended up being an officer involved shooting. The caller that was reporting it was actually the person with the rifle. Um, and you can hear the dispatcher on primary radio dispatching information that the officer had already heard on live 911 just because there is that little bit of time delay to get the info to the officer. But you can hear both playing in the officer's background. So it doesn't by any means replace the dispatcher. They, so they, can, they can only hear what's going on. They can't they can talk. talk to them. Okay. You have a question. Yeah. You mentioned they um, obviously hear turn by turn like it's a call from the side or a vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, now they're hearing in real time. There's no in from the dispatcher against it on the radio. And so now it, is it starting to conflict where like, you have the officer this time on the radio and give an update? Um, no, what those look like for, for our agency is that typically we're working more than one call. Um, and then the officer might, okay, so an officer's responding, and before it would look like, you know, I'm following a drunk driver, I'm this way, I'm that way, I'm this way, I'm that way, and we continuously update it so much so that we couldn't even handle like the other invite call or whatever else was going on. So now when we dispatch two units to that, if they're green and they're monitoring by time of one, We'll wait until they catch up to the vehicle for four or five minutes so we won't air any updates to them. And then when the officer gets close, they'll just tell us, I'm you know, northbound on fourth passing such and such, I'm behind the vehicle. Um, and then the officer also will come up on the radio and say, you know, I copied that, you know, the vehicle just TC or something like that. And you know, brought to that. <coughs> so they'll so they'll come up. And, the radio yeah. Yeah, and it allows the primary dispatcher to work multiple incidents at the same time. Because by the time you get to read those updates, like you said, it's it's all close. So in that kind of incident, if you have an officer that's coming from a separate sector that's far away, you don't have any other available. Once they get in the area, you can click on it or like, can you assign it to them and they can hear it from the video? They, they can choose it. Okay. If they're not already listening, um, <coughs> it's available and they can click on it and choose it. So usually, you know, the officers that don't want to listen to it when something critical happens, they'll jump in and all start it and start it. But they're usually um, logged in at the beginning of shift anyway, just so that they can see caller locations. A lot of them drive around if they don't want to, just because it's too much, but it gives them a quick ability to understand. Um, so for dispatch, um, they wanted to give this to patrol when they first, you know, were piloting it. And then when I saw it, I was like, wait, why is patrol always giving cool stuff? Like, we have that too. Uh, so we like the mapping system. We like that we can see our caller in relation to our officer. We like to see who's listening, who's not listening, because we can ask the sergeant to jump in or a patrol unit. Uh, and how it helps the call taker is you can see where your caller is on that map via rapid SOS. Uh, so you'll know which side of the parking lot they're on. Um, so our dispatchers are loving that. You can also see when multiple calls <laughs> come in around the same one. Um, primary dispatcher, again, they can manage multiple incidents and there's not that waiting factor. When you hear in the dispatch center, um, the person has a gun or where where they've been stabbed. And when you're on primary radio, you're thinking, can you route the call, route the call? So I, can, I need to know where that's at. And you're waiting on them to send it. Well, now you can see it. The, you know, this dispatcher is taking this call, it's in this beat, this area, this sector, and you can start developing a plan. Or you can anticipate your officer is going to say it on the other end of the radio, show me an route to the shooting that just occurred, or whatever it may be. 
just gives more situational awareness of the group. Okay. Our supervisors in dispatch, they can monitor, they can have a plane in the background, just like we do with all the 17 different radio channels that they're listening to. Uh, so it can be one more thing, or they can jump in and help when they notice that there's a struggle. Uh, before it was through the phone system and you would, it would be in your headset now, so you can in the background. Um, lessons learned is address the fears of your dispatchers because I was one of those where I had just promoted and been a dispatcher 20 years and I said, no thanks, don't want it, I'm scared, it's a lot, and now I'm forever grateful for it. But um, address that and then we also learned the lesson of what does it sound like when officers jump calls from the other side of the radio. Um, so it just, I didn't even look at it that way at first, which I should have, was just have a protocol in place. And I have a sample protocol if anybody wants it, but it just sounds like an, a field initiated incident, whether it be a traffic stop or a distant flag or domestic violence, such and such location. We need the officers to give us the location. So when they first got it, it would just come out and show me a route to E Street. And you're like, what? Um, so that was confusing. So then just teaching the officers to eat it all because we don't have it yet. So show me a route to E Street on the DB, on the ledger, on the call, or whatever it may be, or on C. Um, that happens as well. So that was our big lesson learned. And then teamwork. Um, you can't dispatch alone, it's not a single person show. Uh, we all know that. And when this stuff hits the fan, it becomes this great cohesive teamwork. And this is helping include patrol into that, where patrol and dispatch are working in this, this team environment. When our fear was that they're going to think we're doing the wrong thing, we're not asking the right questions, and uh, you realize that within two days, the officers are coming out and bringing coffee and snacks. And what I'm like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. Thank you for what you do. You guys are amazing. And I can't believe they talk to you like that. And before it was like, they would go to a call, like, why didn't the dispatcher ask that? My dispatcher's a horrible, they just, and I'm not an officer, so I'm gonna pretend like maybe that's true or not true, but I've heard it's true. Um, that they would just by default blame the dispatcher. Um, like, wow, they didn't even ask what the suspect looked like. And now it's like, hopefully they did. And if we didn't, because we forgot, we don't get it on the radio. Instead of before, it was so preemptive. I'm like, ask the car in the car. Ask the where it's going. Ask what the suspect looks like. You're like, I know. I am. Can you just get off the radio because we're doing that? Um, but now it's so instantaneous. They're like, hey, my inspectors are on point. So it's really a great thing to watch the teamwork just change uh, from what it used to be. And to, to clarify the point, of the, it's, it's so fascinating because in today's world, in all of our centers, we get a hot call, hey, there's a bank robbery. Well, it takes that dispatcher a little bit of time, but what you're talking about is those units are already saying, hey, I'm around to that bank robbery. The dispatcher has no idea because that call's been taken as an injury. So they'll start them in route and then that call will pop out and they'll put them on it? Yeah. Okay. Um, if we create two incidents, so if you're waiting on your call taker to route it and the officer goes out on it, it's already on scene or in route to it, we'll create a self-initiated activity and we'll link them in tab. So, um, Join the calls together once it's there. Otherwise, we're going to the so. And is this, is this a mix of your cab or is it separate? It's separate right now. Yeah, it's not interface. Oh, there's my dot. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, this is uh, what the screen looks like one day when I took it. There's 41 calls on this screen that are pending. Um, the yellow ones are priority two calls, and they're yellow bars because they timed out uh, because we don't have any units available. Um, just putting that out there, they can take a really long time, but that's what happens. Um, it's stressful as the primary dispatcher, and if you can imagine, this is now 145 instead of whatever is what they were doing last weekend. How do you know which call to send next? And when the calls are coming in like that, when your officers hear it, and if they do jump a call, great. I would like you to tell me you're on scene of a non-reader or in route or whatever, because then I know you're hearing it and you're finding out that that's what you need to go to. Um, and then again, these are pending, which means my dispatcher has 60 officers in the field that are all on active incidents as well that they're managing. So there's just a different level of stress when you're trying to figure it all out, but when you have them on the other side, 
with you, working with you through it, um, it reduces your stress a little bit. And then also as a dispatcher, as a call taker, you know, you're trying to get that info so fast and get it right and just give them everything that they need and trying to decipher what the person's saying. And now when they're listening to it, there's just this like comfort knowing, well, they're hearing what they're saying. They're hearing that it sounds like they're not telling the truth or whatever. So uh, that's helped. And then um, as a dispatcher, you know, you, you try to create a synopsis and then on primary, you, you know, short it even more. And so um, it's a lot to try to synopsize and get it right so that the field units are making the right decision because you don't want them to get in the situation that, you know, they're going to get in trouble for make the make them be in a bad situation, essentially. Um, so the, the articles that I see now are, talk, they talk a lot about a dispatcher and how what they say or do can affect an officer's decision once they're out of the field. You know, that's called dispatcher prime, where, uh, you know, there's an over-response or under-response. We had an incident in San Diego recently involving a homeless man, and, you know, the activists that got on the television, the first thing they're saying is we want the audio tapes from dispatch of any phone calls related to this, and we want all the radio traffic. Because they're not just looking at, you know, officers, and they're, it's controversial to have an officer involved shooting, but they're also now looking at what a dispatch do and say, because that's going to affect what the officer does and says. And those articles are endless. Um, and then we talked about what you want for Thank you. Um, so this this is a video, but I don't know if um, we're going to test our audio. Um, we'll, we'll actually leave it on this slide then. So that's um, a news clip that I highly recommend that you watch. But um, Kyle Plush, 16 years old in Cincinnati, Ohio, and he got trapped underneath the third row seat of the Honda Odyssey van that he was in and called 911 two times. Um, so I've been kind of following this case. And December of 2020, um, the courts decided that the dispatcher and some of the employees could be sued individually as well. Um, so the things that were said about the dispatchers and the, and the field responding units was that the councilman said Kyle Push would be alive today if we had known about this. The mayor said the cops dispatchers were wrong. Um, and then, you know, they asked about the investigation and then you're going to be sued individually. The family settled for $6 million on, on the suit against the city. Um, but what, what happened in this situation was that Kyle had called 911 and said that he was in the parking lot, he was trapped, and he gave the dying declaration to his mother that if I'm not going to die, I can't breathe. Um, took four minutes to find out his GPS location of where he actually was. Three minutes to drive there and respond. So we're seven minutes in. Officers remained on scene in that parking lot for 11 minutes looking for the vehicle. Um, during those 11 minutes that they were on scene, Kyle called back and got 911 and told them the, the color, make, model, description of the vehicle and where in the parking lot he was. And that information was not relayed to field units that were on scene looking for the vehicle. Um, they cleared and six hours later they found his body and he had passed away. Sad, emotional. Um, for me to talk about that, because as a dispatcher, you do the job because you want to do the right thing. You don't want to make that mistake. I don't know why the information wasn't related to field units, but with this technology, they would have heard it. Um, so I don't know what happened in the comp center. I'm not here to say dispatchers are bad, but protect that dispatcher that for whatever reason didn't get the information relayed. I don't know what happened, but. It happened, it's tragic, and it could have been prevented because we do have the technology that people can use if they just would not be scared of it because it will help save a life uh, and protect your people. Um, so under scrutiny, we, we kind of talked about this already. One of six policing, start with a better 911 system. That's what's coming into, into my inbox, and I'm thinking, as a manager, that's my job. Protect my dispatchers and my agency. That's what I do. My dispatchers protect the citizens and the officers. I protect my dispatchers. 
So while they were afraid of this, it's also offering them some coverage. Uh, the missing link in police reform is 911, um, and someone should be held accountable after cops were sent to the wrong address. Um, this kid, he was, the murderer actually called him a suspect and said, I'm gonna kill him and had already beaten him. Um, he said, the, the killer said, you know, send the cops, this is my address. Instead of 12th Street, they put 10th Street. Um, so they went to the wrong address, the kid was killed. Then it ends up on the news. I've done it myself, not this, thank God. Um, but it happened, and it's a, you're a second away from ending up in this situation. And it's awful, and dispatchers aren't doing it on purpose, like we're human. Um, and then another one, last night, is one call. So, I mean, there's so many, and that's why you're not supposed to put a lot of words on a slide, but it's, it's endless. Um, So this one, it's dispatch timing. So I just did in bold, police shooting, dispatch timing, dispatch information was erroneous, and shooting errors. So um, they, they do experiments and they say like, you know, if the information from the officer, this is what happened out in the field. So um, this is about dispatch a lot, but it's also about what the officers are doing in the field. So this, this tool actually helps them when they're making decisions. Um, this is another video. It, it doesn't. It's probably not going to play, but it's uh, it's it's really sad to listen to. The, the mom had called in and said that her son had been shot in the drive by duty shooting. It says friend when it does the uh, words, but to me, it's not like she said son. Um, but this kid had been shot, and when the dispatcher kept asking, "Is he breathing? Yes, he's barely breathing. Is he still breathing? Yes, he's barely breathing." And then she said. How many epic times do I have to tell you he's barely breathing, he's been shot? And she said, and the dispatcher said, you know what? I'm gonna let you deal with this yourself. You don't talk to me like that or whatever it was. And then hangs up. Paul's gone. It's tied. It's like, oh, okay. So uh, yeah, so you just you never know like what the dispatchers are dealing with, but had that again been on live 911, somebody in the field would have heard that and they would have been able to respond. Um, and uh, so this is my least favorite slide up here. So stuff we've already talked about, and I just pull out words that um, that pop up in the different articles that I see um, within this past year. About over response, under response, burnout, stress, transparency, incorrect information, um, dispatch being the, the gatekeepers. So it's like you're looking for, you know, the nation is asking for this type of police reform, but it really does involve your, your centers and what information is going on there. Uh, so dispatchers, again, are driven by a desire to help. That's why they do what they do, is they want to do the right thing, and this allows them and enhances what they're already trying to do. Do it fast, get, make it complete, and give the information. So, um, approximately 240 million 911 calls in a year. So, for, I know Fritz Reber was supposed to be here today. His information's here if you have any questions or want to contact him. He did not know I was putting his quote in the slide. Um, but he had sent me an email after I sent him an article and said, hey, this happened at this agency. Maybe you should contact them and see if there's anything you can do. Because when I see those articles, I think, dang, we missed an opportunity because that person could have been saved. Um, so his response when, when he said this, and I'm going to read the whole thing, is although this, or, also this article is tragic but not uncommon. This type of article is great to send out with context and appropriate understanding for the agency dispatcher, but frankly, mistakes happen to everyone. And any system that limits the impact and frankly, unfair pressure on dispatchers to get it right 100% of the time or people die is a value add and reduces liability and perhaps stress. So he just sent that to me in response to an email, and I love what he said because. He created the system. This was his baby. This was his idea that he came up with because he wanted to do it because it was the right thing to do and he knew it could help. And 
when people think like, oh, well, you think these dispatchers are terrible and they're slow and that's why it's going out there. That's not what's going on. And this is this is him just being raw and he emailed to me and I was like, that that's his vision and it falls in line and he understands and respects what dispatchers do, but it falls in line with what what we believe as well, that dispatchers are absolutely incredible. And if you can prevent them from ending up on the news making a human error mistake, which is what I keep seeing, is they're they're picking on that concept. That's how bad our dispatchers. Um, and just Ellie was born making informed decisions when they're out there. Protect your dispatchers, protect your officers, your agency, and your citizens. When you have a tool that for our agency, a, a baby's drowning and all you hear is screaming. Um, and that someone's drowning, they're not giving you location, they're not giving you information, and you have an officer that's either driving towards the house or away because they don't know yet, because we don't have an address to put it in cab. We had it happen, and the officer's driving there on the scene within 90 seconds. I want that in my city, right? So if something happens at my house, I know they're hearing me, they're actually driving to me before I can even tell them what my street is. So help your citizens, like, we need to enhance what we're already doing and what we're already trying to do, which is protect and serve. And then I put the photos. Um, Tamir Rice and me Amberly for a lot of the reasons why back in 2016, Chris Reber decided that he, he wanted to like come up with this idea of like, hey, I wonder what it would look like if. Uh, Tamir Rice is a 12 year old that was shot at the park and the caller said, um, that there's a man at the park, or the dispatcher said there's a man at the park with a gun. And the caller said, there's somebody at a park that appears he has a gun, possibly it's fake, and it looks like a kid. So just, we heard a little bit different, and translated a little bit different, and when the outcome has been different, I'm not sure, but that was something that inspired um, Chris. And Denise Amberly, as you all know, the daughter of a sergeant, um, of a police officer in Florida who was kidnapped, raped, and murdered. And she was calling 911 from the back of her captive car, driving past police officers where there was police officers in multiple counties and helicopters looking for her. And she was calling and that information was never relayed over the radio. Um, so, uh, and then Kyle, and again, love my dispatchers and I'm not trying to throw any of them under the bus at all by saying, but these things are preventable. So let's give our dispatchers the tools that will help them save the lives because that's why they do it. And, um, so that's all I have. Questions? Yeah. Go ahead. Recognize in the dispatch side, I'm just curious if speaking to the communications people, what the system has done to the traffic load on the radio system. Yeah, it has lessened our radio traffic. Um, they're not asking about the road and questions. It's still, um, but yeah, in the turn by turn, you know, the officer is working all the different incidents, not, not so much radio traffic that you can't even get on to speak to them. Um, so it's about a ground. Yeah. Where does the audio come from? The West Point the system is five minutes from the day. So they install a server in our server room, so when it comes in, it splits and it goes to 911 and it goes to the live 911 server and then it goes out of the cards. I'm not IT, so. It comes, it comes, <laughs> it comes off your 911 system before it's presented to the operators. No, it's same time. So as soon as we answer and there's audio, um, it goes to the field units and we can dispatch simultaneously. So it's yeah. like the audio. Oh, is that what you were asking? I'm sorry. No, um, yes, okay. what I was asking. It does come out of another NPC application on the web browser. Go ahead. Yeah, it's just curious if the things. So, with the bar five, let's say they're in District One and they're going to get all 911 based on that geographical area. Is that how it works? And then they have access to click on them if they come in or is it? Yeah, the officer actually chooses. Um, you know, that that and when they log in, they'll pick and it'll save your profile and your title. So, our officers might choose, um, I wish I had a demo, but 
that's why you ask your person to be good mile long. Uh, so they can pick, um, you know, a quarter mile, one click of a button, and then they can pick me up and set up like 8, 11, 12, or whatever you want to label them. They'll put that one as well. So they can do multiple. But it's an automatic audio that on, I think, be on the map for their call. Yeah, so if, I, if I've chosen 8, 11 and a quarter mile, they're going to automatically play for me every time they come. Oh, okay. So I won't have to interact. It'll just come in and play. And if I want to get rid of it, then I'll just dismiss it. Like, there's that you want. Are you able to eliminate, like, certain areas where you don't want it to come? So, for example, like, you want to be where you're getting away to get hundreds of calls and talk about the different areas or ways to, like, geofence that area so it's not easy to call? Yes. So you would geofence the different areas and then you would include that one. Are there any other agencies in Southern California with that question? I don't know how Southern Clovis is, but Clovis is using it. There's a valley near Fresno. I know that I can see their presentation with, with Clovis TV. Um, they have 50 on board now, and it starts at number 30, I think, to go live before the end of the year, probably more. But as far as like local and San Diego County, I'm not sure. So I don't know if there's any in LA. In San Diego County, where they're at that 30 foot count, like the like, sheriff or San Diego PD, are they looking at it? I don't know. That's why, like, I was telling you, my chief constantly in Santa Barbara, she came from San Diego. So when this first came out, I had my years to come back with it. My actual response was, well, no way to hell. I don't want that to be the person. But seeing the presentation, it makes it more. Um, what happens when calls two or three and four or five and six come in? How does the system handle that? You're only going to stream one call at a time. So um, they'll stack. And you can click on them and choose them. That will require an interaction. Um, so if you get three on the same one, an officer can dismiss one and listen to the next or the next. Or maybe not. But it will. Is an officer that lock as well? No. No, there's no interface with cat. And the officers meet all the time. Um, so they'll show up red on the screen. And then if there's something going on in the area, walk in the Yeah. Any other questions? And for those of you that want to see a live demo, actually, with Carla, if you go to our YouTube page, catch up with our website. Is that right, Ernest? So last year's uh, showcase, uh, we have the entire presentation on there. So if you want to go back to your agency and say, hey, and she's doing a live demo with a live uh, demonstration from her agency. And it's, it's excellent. It, it really helps answer some of these questions too that we have. Because a lot of the same questions asked here today were asked on that live uh, during that demo. Yeah, you can reach out to Fred or I as well if you have any questions or just want to demo or if not, not a sales kid, money off it. But, um, <laughs> but you can reach out and I'm happy to share. We want to come on one of our bathrooms and see that and offer that to Absolutely. Yeah. And somebody that toured before, they asked my supervisor, can I talk to this around there and using it? They said, would you be upset if you didn't take it away? He said he didn't want it. She's like, oh, yeah, I'll leave my husband in the day. She would just like put it on the desk and walk out. They absolutely love it. So, yeah. Any other questions? Thank you so much.